Welcome back to opening statements. Now to what is tipping the scales of justice as Tracy Ferreter set to appear in court at any moment now in Florida where her attorneys will be arguing her motion to be declared indigent. She and her husband, Tim Ferreter, have both been charged with abusing their 13-year-old son by forcing him to live in an 8x8 eight eight box in their garage. Tim Ferreter has already been convicted and sentenced to serve five years in prison, plus five years probation after that. And we expect to see a lot of the same evidence from Tim's trial to be brought in against his wife, Tracy, especially those ring video recordings. Yes, I'll just keep giving you more chances. Every day, it's a new chance for the Even though he doesn't care, he doesn't want to be nice to anyone. Well, let's let do this. Oh, let's let me bring some food because I think he's gonna have a good night. Oh, let me do everything for Okay. Oh, I can't talk because he got in trouble because he got caught. It's like, give me a break. Start owning up to what you're doing and then and those uh, bleeps you heard there, uh, that was because the minor child's name was being said on that audio and couldn't uh, be put over the air. Now, why is she asking to be declared indigent? Well, likely because she wants a public defender to represent her, and then she would not have to pay. But in order to qualify uh, for a public defender, you're obviously funded by the state, by taxpayer dollars, uh, you have to qualify on a form. And so I'm not sure what's going on, why this wasn't handled in an office, but today it's going to be handled in the open courtroom before the judge. So we're going to see what arguments come out. But this tells me that Tracy's going to trial. I mean, because she could plead. She could have pleaded yesterday if she wanted to own these allegations. They are just allegations, but if she wanted to own it. I think she would have pleaded up, you know, to this point. So I think we're headed to a trial. Let me bring in my guests and see what they think of this. Still with me, law enforcement expert Sonny Slaughter and former homicide and domestic violence prosecutor Melba Pearson. Okay, so what do we think is going to happen with Tracy? Is, is she looking to fight this like Tim did? We saw how well it went for him. Sonny Slaughter, start us off if you would, please. Well, if she is indigent, excuse me, then that would have to play out on paper. What are the numbers? What does that say? She, along with everyone else, has the right to, you know, that indigent status. But it will not change how it's going to play out in the courtroom with that evidence. So it seems like she's trying to fight this. And the evidence, the same evidence, and maybe more or maybe less, is going to be used in her case as it was with her husband. So it looks like she wants to go to trial. It looks like she wants to have her day in court. She has that right. Her status won't matter. She'll get the public defender, and she'll have to defend her actions. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, these charges, they are bad. So is that evidence? I've got a clip of from that ring camera. Um, and she's talking to her son about... Uh, stealing some cookies. We, we know this was a, a bad kid. He was bad. He was really mischievous, did some terrible things. He was hard to control, uh, but he should not have been abused. Uh, that was deplorable what happened to him, in my opinion. I want to play this audio clip where you hear her voice uh, talking to him, and uh, you also are going to hear Tim's voice as well on the video. Why not earn stuff? Why? We said we're going to get you a computer. We're going to get all these things. Why? It's hard to. It's well, it's hard. hard. You were gonna have all, every kind of thing that you'd want. You just earn it. You just have ice cream tonight. So why are you gonna steal chocolate? You're getting cookies. You're getting ice cream. You're getting all these things. So why steal when you're getting all this stuff? Well, uh, you, you go off the edge at school. You'll be done with school. You'll be in here homeschooling. I told you that's a possibility. So go ahead and test me tomorrow by going to school and misbehaving or doing anything you shouldn't do. Test me. Another one of those videos uh, coming in. I'm sure this evidence is going to come back in again. I'm going to hear it again. Melba Pearson, talk to me about um, some of that, that process. The public, uh, we've all heard it. It's been shocking, sickening uh, to many of us. Uh, how do you think this may go for Tracy? I don't think this is going to go well for her um, from the standpoint that number one, she's heard on the, the audio tape, you know, disciplining him and, and kind of pushing that envelope. 
you hear the husband saying all these things. She has a duty to intervene. So if it was her husband was the sole abuser, let's say, right? She still would have had a duty to call the police or try to protect her child in some way, shape or form. So she can't separate herself from the activities that went on in her house when she had full knowledge of it. So I don't think this is going to play out well for her. There is the possibility that if she's declared indigent and she has the public defender, you know, maybe the public defender can work out a better plea agreement for her later on down the line. And this does end up resolving short of a trial. But anything is on the table at this point. But the evidence at this point looks very damning for her. Yes. And I'm so glad you brought up that point, Melba, about how she had a duty still to rescue her child. And the separation isn't going to solve things for her in terms of potential legal life ability here and I think this is just my personal opinion on I think that's why she wanted her case severed from her husband I think that she's thinking maybe her counsel's thinking oh we've got a chance if we make him look like the real bad guy um, and yeah in my opinion he is a real bad guy but uh, I also am of the opinion that she acted in concert with him. And I've got another piece of that evidence prosecutors will use to support that theory that they certainly have. This is where they're scolding him about turning on the air conditioning. He's in that box in the garage. I used to call it a tomb during the trial because it looks more like a tomb to me, really. He's in the tomb in the garage and they wouldn't let him put on the air. Turn the air on in your room? Yes. Are you supposed to touch that? Did you hear Baba? Yes. Did you hear his question? No. Are you supposed to touch air conditioning? No. Why did you touch it? Because it's getting hot. I don't give a if it's getting hot. You're a tough guy. You don't touch the air conditioning. I'll deal with you tomorrow on that. Now, and this guy, he's trying to get a new trial. Uh, the latest news with his case was apparently he put forth uh, this motion to the court uh, asking for bond pending the disposition of his appeal and, and included two employment letters. And uh, one of the businesses he included uh, this letter from had their lawyer speak out and say it's fraudulent. Uh, we had his attorney on the show and she said she didn't know it was fraudulent that his family members and friends provided it to her. Um, but uh, this is not good. Uh, Melba, uh, quickly, do you think there's any chance the judge is going to give him a bond while he waits for his appeal? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. I think we have a better shot of, you know, Martians coming down and partying with us on New Year's <laughs> Eve than him actually getting bond. That's right. So. And that sounds fun. I'd be I'd be game for that. Uh, Melba Pearson, <laughs> we got to say a big thank you and uh, goodbye to you for now. Please come back again soon. Thank you for all your insight. And Sunny Slaughter is going to stay with us as we're getting ready for Tracy Ferreter's hearing. Let's take a live look at the courtroom in Florida. This is where it's all set to happen. They're waiting on the attorneys. And my friends, this is all for this episode of Opening Statements. And you can watch and share this episode if you like. It's on courttv.com. Click on